Hello and uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this playlist, I'm covering microservice pattern with the help of Node.js. We are considering Node.js as a programming language and we are covering all the different microservice pattern which we can understand from the basics to intermediate to advanced level. So in previous set of videos, this is not the sixth video in previous initial five videos, I talked about the, the requirement of microservices, why we need to move to a microservice if we have a complex system where we are not able to manage the code and a lot of modules are tightly coupled to one another. Okay, then we talk about different microservice patterns, CQRS, event sourcing, those all microservice patterns were divided in different categories like in the integration pattern we talked about API gateway pattern, then aggregator pattern, gateway routing pattern, Okay, so then we talked about different kind of uh, client-side rendering pattern like client-side uh, React applications or client-side Angular applications. So this is a client-side UI composition. There can be a case where we will be doing a composition of UI from server-side that is called a server-side fragment rendering and that is called server-side UI composition pattern. Okay, we have like in terms of database, we can say database per service, shared database per service. So the these different patterns are divided based on the different categories like we have a cqrs command query responsibility segregations event sourcing pattern then we have a different saga patterns and observability pattern means where you are observing things are happening in different microservice log aggregation performance metrics distributed tracing when you have like microservice multiple microservices running in distributed environment in that case, how you can do the tracing of a particular request. Okay, then we have this service discovery pattern where you are actually registering a particular service and then external client will be able to discover the service and make an appropriate endpoint call. Circuit breaker pattern, what happens like a when a particular service goes down to prevent the cascade failure, right? Before we actually enters into a particular service, we check a particular request okay this service is currently running or not so based on the health check criteria we are checking that this particular success count or failure count has been reached or not if failure count has been reached then we just make that particular service offline and we reroute the request to a particular another instance of the same service okay then different deployment strategies and all so in the say in this video now we are going to talk a little bit more on the same and then we will go to node.js services how we can write them so we have already talked about what is the microservice where we are actually dividing services into the smaller ones so just we are creating a small small modules and modules and creating those services as a, as a independent services so that they can be deployed they can be maintained they can be managed from the code perspective by individual developers okay so every service can have a different stack you can write in python node.js java spring boot mvc i mean you can choose your technologies you can write okay so what all issues we were trying to address through this diagram in the previous set of videos like these are different problems like how to handle security how to how we decompose the services how we how we can achieve the service discovery, how to deploy, how to make a service independent, how to establish a communication between two different services, how to maintain a data consistency where two services are writing the same data and reading it, how to display data, data composition where you are reading a data from multiple services, how the external clients after adding the security can talk to these services should we expose these services to external world or there should be one single point of contact like api gateway how to handle the config logging health check metrics how we can prevent a failure and how we can manage the deployment so many questions but there can be answer of it by implementing all these sort of patterns this is uh, i got it from the microservice.io and wikipedia page also this is available so different microservice pattern we have a circuit breaker access token remote processor invocation these are just different terms but these are also divided into different patterns like data composition patterns cross-cutting concerns uh, different deployment pattern uh, communication pattern through the api gateway through the messaging through the rpc okay discovery pattern client side discovery or server side discovery okay that we have already discussed observability which is talking about 
how we are actually tracking the services using performance metrics, using the log metrics, application metrics, audit logging, all these things are there. So first we'll talk about one most common feature is API Gateway. So this API Gateway like AWS has its own API Gateway through which you can connect to any REST services or maybe a particular Lambda or any other service, right? So API Gateway can be a single point of contact for our external client to talk to us, right? Your client will not be able to talk to services directly. You need to go through the API Gateway. So at this API Gateway layer, you can add authorization, you can add authentication, so you can before your client reach to your services, you can check a lot of different things about like, okay, do is this client authorized to talk to this particular service? And you can also define a routing where you can decide, okay, for this particular route, I will be sending this service, this request to this service, this request to that service, okay? Uh, API Gateway is a single entry point for entire, entire system. It can handle the, handles the security, other services communication freely. So like AWS API Gateway, similarly Azure might be having and the Google Cloud DCP might be having something. So what they are doing is they are adding all these features for you. So you don't need to configure by itself. You don't need to create your own API Gateway service. You can just use the, the inbuilt, I mean already prepared services from the in these infra providers. So API Gateway takes a particular set of messages. It can be your own service or it can be a AWS API Gateway, right? If you are writing your own, then you'll be providing a particular set of payload. And in that payload, you will be saying, okay, uh, once the request is coming, then I will be forwarding this request to a particular service, right? So API Gateway will be handling the request. Service discovery, okay? This we talked many times, service discovery and service registry. So whenever the client comes, right? So client is actually going to talk to a particular router. Okay. So service registry need to be created, which will keep a metadata of each producer service and specification of each. A service instance would be registered to a registry when starting or, uh, or deregister when it is getting shut down. So service registry, okay. I am a service. I'm a shopping cart service. I'm a checkout service. So whenever that, that service instance is coming up, they need to register to this service registry. And whenever it, they are going down, they need to deregister. So whenever my router came, I mean the request came, I will be looking at the service where I can find this auth service, checkout service. So where should I go? I will go to service registry nowhere else. So there are different kind of service registry we have like, okay, client side can be like, uh, uh, different examples like Netflix, Eureka and uh, server side it is AWS ELB. Okay, so what we are doing in the service discovery, so whenever the service is coming up, we are actually registering it and whenever the service is going down, then we are deregistering it. Okay, so whenever the client request is coming in, coming in, then they will be able to decide where to go next. Okay, so we can use like for all the service discovery console is called pro provided from Hasi Core. This is the organization and this is a nice tool. I used it just to just explore how it works and you can just spin up this with the simple container. Okay. Here you can just check. Okay. You can do a health check. You can just enable the data communications between different services and you can just make this up just by pulling this image and uh, instantiating a container using this command. Okay. So health check endpoints, uh, your services, it's a service responsibility that they should have a health check response, health check endpoint. Either you write Python, Noob, JS or Java, like health endpoint I have, and it is returning me the 200 status code. So until it keeps returning me 200 for every uh, call, which I'm making for the health endpoint means that request is healthy, right? And how I can register my services to this console is just provided so you can require this module and you can register it okay so basic simple and once you register these health services you will be able to see some kind of a logs so in pm2 logs we, we see this sta stopping starting critical passing all those things it will be able to capture in the console okay another thing we have is communications between services so how we can establish uh, communications so there are different kind of communication happens into different microservices. So there are, there may be a different protocols involved while one service talking to another. So it can be just a REST call. It can be a gRPC. It can be a socket IO communication or it can be a simple 
I mean TCP layer or whatever you want. But mostly what we do is okay, the rest call from service one to service two, or maybe gRPC if we want to make it more asynchronous. You throw an event and then service two is handling that event. Okay, so these are the different options. It depends on the behavior of communications. You can use event bus if you wanted to decouple them a little further. Where, but in that case, you will not know that what service two is, who are the subscriber. In service one, we will be you will be just sending an event to the event bus, and service two will be subscribing it. But these all gRPC, HTTP socket, I you already know who is your client. Okay. Message broker. This is just the same thing. Like from API gateway, we are getting the request, and we are using these message brokers like Kafka, RabbitMQ, Redis, PubSub. Service one will be publishing the event to the message broker. Might be service two is there. Who will be listening to this message broker or uh, Redis publisher or RabbitMQ queues? I mean, it can be SQS, it can be Kafka, RabbitMQ, or anything like from the infra providers, or you can have your own instance of Kafka, RabbitMQ, or Redis. So once the service one is publishing the message, service two is able to read the message. In that case, service one is not aware about service two. It is uh, to achieve decoupling, or you can see the loose coupling between services. Then there are different patterns which are divided based on the based on how we are managing the data because there may be a different services might be reading the same data source or different services might be reading the different data source. Okay, so shared database or a different database. So it depends on our requirement what we wanted to achieve. Like uh, if you wanted to achieve the data consistency, querying and scaling it depends on different parameters we have. So if you want data consistency and we don't want to have a conflict in the data read write then let's have a different database when there is no use case of sharing the data between different services. Uh, data consistency like you can you can use uh, transactions where you will be running a different operations and one particular operation failed then you will be reverting the whole transaction. Okay. Querying API compositions, this is another pattern where you are actually querying to a particular service, that service will be talking to another services to get the data. So API composition we do in some cases where we want to gather the data from a single entry point. It's not like I will be talking, I will be going and talking to individual service. API gateway will talk to one service, that service is responsible for collecting the data for me. So this is API composition. There may be, this may be a GraphQL APIs, REST APIs and I will be Having this is the service one as a GraphQL APIs will be collecting the data and like this. Okay, now circuit breaker pattern. So this is actually used for fast fill strategy. So mechanism for fast fill of request towards unhealthy services. So whenever we see that that service is unhealthy to prevent the cascade failure, we stop traffic to that particular service so that unhealthy service can recover safely and we are actually preventing the unnecessary traffic and cascade field by routing the request to unhealthy service. We are just rerouting it somewhere else. Okay. Now distributed tracing. So in the distributed environment and where we have where many microservices are involved, right? We are unable to trace the particular request. So this is in the microservice world when you have a multiple microservice request is going from one to two to three to four. You don't know where the request fails, in which particular microservice is failed to respond properly to the request. So in that case, we can do a distributed tracing. There can be a tracing server and there are many solutions available. You can have a just one tracing ID or request ID or message ID or something. You just pass the same message ID to that request chain flow and that tracing server will, will be able to track where that particular request blocked or some uh, error happened okay like this is a distributed tracing for a particular tool here you can see the eight traces and this is actually flowing from uh, different services okay here you can just see you can go into it and you can look inside it okay before going into the testing uh, I will say that we haven't covered a lot about uh, and we are just talking theoretical aspects for now but now what we will do, I will start with the basics, okay, like you have a two Node.js microservice, what all possible ways they can talk, how we can do the load balancing, how we can use a proxy button on the local and for everything we will be using the Docker for local development. 
in the production you can be using Kubernetes, you will be using Kubernetes or ECS or any other tool. That's your choice. But for local development and uh, for the demos, we can just use the Docker Compose and Docker. So if you're not aware about Docker and Docker Compose, just have a look. I already created a playlist to understand what Docker is, how Docker works, how we can spin up multiple containers with the help of Docker Compose. Okay, how to define a, how to write a Docker file, Docker ignore file, how to create an entry point, how to write Docker Compose file, different services having different containers. Okay, all these things we will try to simulate on our local environment with the help of maybe a nest.js services or basic express rest endpoints okay thanks everyone